I'm on the edge of my seat. You should be too. Let's hear it. The one thing about Fred, Rodney, and I is that we all have a fond spot in our heart for this city of Detroit because Rodney started his NFL career there. Fred was born in Detroit. I worked there as a sports writer and broadcaster for 20 years. And a lot of people just hate Detroit. They don't get it. They just think of crime or whatever. But let me tell you, that's just a vicious rumor started by a half a million victims. <laughs> hey, hey, the other thing is, you know, it, that's the Motor City. Detroit is where the car was invented. It keeps the country moving. And they're always coming up with innovations and uh, electric cars and uh, eco-friendly cars. I hear they've got a new uh, contraption that they've put together. And uh, this is going to cure the noise inside the car. That's right. It fits right over her mouth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> laughing. Hey, Fred. Hey, Fred, I'm not sure you knew or not, but you know I'm black, right, Fred? You know that? <laughs> yeah, I, know I just want to make sure. Yes, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, black people have been shortchanged for a long time. Black History Month, of course, shortest month of the year. But, Fred, I got to tell you this. I think Passover... <laughs> Passover should really be a black holiday. Why? I'm dead serious. Why? You know what? Black people have been passed over for 400 years in this country. Oh, <laughs> I am to life. <laughs> and Rodney, I I'm going to tell you, you know, the holidays right after Thanksgiving, everybody keeps talking about Black Friday. But I don't know about you, Rodney. It's Black Friday every Friday for me. <laughs> Can't take it off. <laughs> <laughs> and some people, uh, you know, they'll be like, okay, this black guy went to the Golden Girls cruise. That's right, the Golden Girls cruise. Thank you for being and man, oh man, what a ball I had. You guys don't even understand how much fun it was. And you can really let your hair down on a cruise like this. And you know why you can? Why? Why? You can mingle, and you don't have to worry about anybody getting pregnant. <laughs> and here's the other good part. Nobody's heart is broken after you leave that cruise. You could break up with them in about six months and really have no nothing to worry about because either they'll have completely forgotten who you are or they won't be around. <laughs> and I got to tell you, the guy who invented the wheelchair, absolute genius. I mean, it's the perfect height. You know what I'm saying? Oh, never mind. <laughs> There's only one drawback with dating older women, I'm telling you. And that's when you're trying to maneuver that chastity belt when they're dressed up in their high school outfit. Uh, <laughs> cheerleaders uniform. <laughs> All right, as I told you earlier, the one thing I love is TV shows, sitcoms, and I said to myself, um, if I ever get that opportunity after my sports writing career, maybe I'll try to come up with a couple of uh, my own TV shows. And so I got a couple of ideas. You remember the show Mr. Ed? Yes. A horse is a horse, of course, of course, and no one can talk to a horse, of course, that is... That's right. I want to make a remake of Mr. Red. This time, if it stars a Wilbur's grandson, and instead of a horse, he's messing around with a talking tube of glue. <laughs> and last but not least... <laughs> We'll save our critique. Do you, do you remember the TV show, the NBC show, Fred? You remember this was on your air. Chips? You Absolutely. remember Eric Estrada, Larry Wilcox? Yep. That was a big show, Chips. Yes, it was. I want to do a remake. You know how popular it is now in Hollywood by doing all black cast. You remember Black Panther was a big success. So I want to do an all black cast. Of chips with uh, Will Smith, Martin Lawrence. I'm going to call it chocolate chips. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. Thank you, guys. Thank you for my five minutes.
Uh, all right, Rob, you ready for my critique? Yes, I'm ready. First of all, I'm going to say this. I think you've improved. Really? Yeah, I really do. I, I, what I liked is that you were telling, you mixed in some stories. Right. Whereas I, if I remember correctly, the one you did before a couple years ago, it was kind of just jokes. Right. Like a joke, Instead you know of what I mean? Like just a one, little something. Right. I got like you. the whole Detroit thing. I, all those various Detroit jokes you had, they kind of came as stories for the most part. And I thought those were good. Um, I thought the, you know, I mean, it's not politically correct, but the fits over her mouth, you know, the noise. I mean, that was that was that was funny. That was pretty good. Um, I thought that the uh, uh, the the, I did think the Passover being a black holiday and the Black Friday were kind of predictable. Right. Now, I do. I think, though, the Passover racist. And I'm no, yeah. I'm no expert, you know, but I think you just set it up. In my opinion, you you set it up too obviously, right? Because by the time you set it up, like, hey, black people have been passed over a lot, or we've been, you know, we knew what was what well, you said. Passover should be a you know black a holiday, black holiday, right? So you kind of yeah. like jumped. To the I order, knew it order. was come, yeah. So I think I think if you tell it, I think that can work, right? You I know, know what you're saying, like like yeah. probably set it up to where. I don't say Passover first. Right. I just right, say, right. like, you know, but there's holidays that are all mixed up and some that Jewish people have that black people should have. And right, then, right. Like Passover, Passover, because we've been passed over for 400 that years. That would be, right? exactly. Yep. Okay, but there that's go. good for when I do the stage performance. Yep. That's, what I, yep. that's the kind of critique I need that makes sense without saying Passover first. Right. Yep, yep. Because so that's there the you joke. Go. Actually, Passover exactly. is the joke. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I thought that was good. Um, I'm fair. trying to read my writing. Um, I don't remember what the was Golden Girls stuff was a little Oh, the Golden Girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, yeah. That was my um, favorite part. I love the Golden Girls stuff. <laughs> that cracked me up. <laughs> um, I didn't really, like, I didn't think the Mr. Ant one was great. Okay. Talking to well, was, I, yeah, I was only I playing yeah. off of, you know, that horses are turned into glue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go yeah, to the glue yeah. factory. Yeah, so it was just kind of like. Yeah. But I and I've heard it, you know, millions of times million from times you. That. But the chocolate, chocolate chips, chips it, it makes me laugh every time you say it. Like that is a funny. That's a good joke. I've told you. I, I've questioned you. Did you really? I, is I that original? That's my joke. That's an original joke. <laughs> that's a good joke. Okay. That's a good joke. Rob that's G. Good. So Rob. overall, my grade, Rob, I'm gonna give you a B. Okay. That's I'm a gonna fair, give you a B. Right. Yeah. Yep, I'll take that. That's all fair. Right. Okay, all Rob right. G. Um. Like I said, the Golden Girls thing had me rolling. I love that one. That was good. Uh, apologies to America, who didn't get to hear it live either. We had to cut about half of it because the first half of it was Rob just ribbing the host that he works with in L.A. <laughs> that, to me, is where you're at your sweet spot, Rob, is when you're going in at people and they just, you know. Chris, you got to hear they that. Just get I, it. Rob G's got to send you that where, I, okay, yeah, I'll send where it I'm to going you. off on Fred and, and Rodney. Right. Uh, Rodney Pete people know. Let me get, I could give them that joke. Rodney Pete who, of course, was an NFL quarterback for 16 years, a star, All-American at USC, and he does a radio show here in L.A., and he used to be on the Best Damn Sports Show. Everybody knows Rodney right. Pete. Uh, but I was saying, you know, Rodney Pete, I was giving all of his accolades, Rob G., right? And then I said, hey, you know, uh, but Rodney's put on some weight since he's uh, <laughs> retired or whatever. It's natural. It's no big deal. And USC was thinking about honoring him by naming a venue, you know, on campus – after him, and they even had a you know a, a, an obese uh, specialist who was going to uh, you know sponsor it and all, and they were going to call it uh, uh, stomach stapled arena as well or stomach stomach staple <laughs> stomach staple <laughs> center <laughs> right center that's what I called it so it was like stuff that's like not that bad. that's not bad all that's right bad. Uh, you gave me a grade too what'd you say. Rob well, you G. know, um, before I give you your grade, Rob, this is this is gonna sound like a diss, but it's more of a no, compliment. Go ahead. No. You are so much funnier just in general than you are in stand-up. Okay. That's fair. Like you you say things that make me laugh just by yourself. That I don't know if you can bottle that into a stand-up routine. Well, but that's the hard could, that's the hard yeah, part. Exactly. Right. A lot of people are like that, Rob G, because that's why people get paid to do it like as a profession right. because it, right. it's not easy to do. It's, it's like when you anchor the news 
and you see people making a million dollars, right, to read the... Everybody, a lot of people can read, right? but everybody can't deliver right. it, right, Chris, the, the right well, way. and I'm going to give you... I, I think, in the, obviously, doing it on stage at a comedy club right. would be difficult, but it can't be easy doing it on a radio show. Like no, that. live. I mean, yeah, I mean you, hear, like, you can hear Rob laughing to himself as he's giving <laughs> the joke, and it's like, Rob, you got to pay it off before we all laugh with right. you. I can't. Well, you know, sometimes when we're doing this show, I'm laughing. Yeah. I can't even get it out. I can't right. get the joke out. Uh, but, but I'm with you. I'm with Chris. I'm giving you a B. Solid okay. B. I'll take that. All right, all right, Alex. Mr. Parker, when I say this, and it comes from a good place in my heart, yes, I yes. think you will kill it on stage for the simple factor that you feed off of people's energy. Right. You're a people person. It's why every weekend you're in a different state eating with five of your different nephews <laughs> yeah. or people that are your <laughs> upcomings, your interns, right. whatever it may be. Right. <laughs> I just know for a fact, Rob, when you're doing it on the radio, now it's just dead silence. You're not feeding off a crowd. You're not feeding off energy. You're not seeing people's reactions. You're not getting able to sure. interact with people. Sure. You're just dry throwing it out there. And then we're trying to dazzle it up like there's an audience. So it comes off extremely tough. So in my opinion, listening to your second one now, which I do think is better than the first one because you added in storytelling, my all-time favorite stand-up comedian is Eddie Murphy. The simple reason why is this guy takes you on a journey. When sure, he sets right. up a joke, a joke or whatever it may be, he tells you a story, dude. Right. And it's it's right. so well done. I'll go back and watch Ron Delirious right now and crack up like it's my first time, even though I've seen right. it 50 billion times. So with you, Rob, I have no doubt, dude, when I'm sitting front row and you're at a comedy club, you will kill it, dude. I already know. So for my grade, I give you an A from the potential I see of what you can do and what you're giving. Man, I have guys, nothing but ceiling for you, dude. Well done. I, you guys have made my day. Mr. Gascon, is he listening in or he's busy? Hey, get Gascon in. He's been running. Am I listening? What do you mean? What are, what are you, like anchors you checked out of your show? You've well, been you know, I mean, I, I, away I'm from not the saying grade. our show, but I'm sure anchors check out of some other show. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm <laughs> hey, listen, uh, I will. I have to say and acknowledge this. This is like what you guys do live radio. It's. For the most part, it is unscripted. I mean, it is scripted, but it's unscripted in terms of the presentation. So I give that acknowledgement an A plus. Uh, the brass to do it also an A plus. I, I do feel like in anything else, you need more reps. And who's writing your jokes, by the way? Uh, actually, Him. I am. Okay. Those are my those are my jokes, and it ain't easy writing jokes. I jot notes down on napkins and stuff. You know, I have some other jokes that I that I didn't want to use on the radio. I'm trying to keep my job at Christmas, so yeah, right, uh, right. there are a couple that I could use in a comedy club, maybe. Yeah. that I can't do on the radio, so I just left Look, those. Look, you the side. think Richard I, Pryor was uh, salt? Use some salty language. Wait till you hear Rob Parker unleash. I, I I do think <laughs> in in your defense, Rob, I think that you should have at least one or two other people that you can bounce these off of. To right. see if they can write something else for you that you can deliver just as good. Okay. Well, no, how many? Fair. Let me ask a question on that. I, I I don't know. I mean, I've always assumed that I never really thought of it, but I've always assumed that you know Eddie Murphy's jokes were no, Eddie no, Murphy's no, jokes. no. Richard I mean, it's no, not people it's just jokes like, for people. Yeah, yeah it's just like music, so musicians. Even guys like that, big Chris yeah. Rock, like yep. they they aren't all his jokes. Nope. People, you know, what, I Chris? get it on the show, like the Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon, all that. I'm talking about Chris Rock's stand up. Yes. That's not all him? No, somebody somebody could offer up jokes like I got hey, hey, I got a perfect joke about you can this buy them, situation. Yeah. And then they'll they'll sell them jokes. Paul Mooney, people, most famous joke writer, I think, you know, well, behind yeah, the scenes of anybody. That's true. Yeah. Right. Do that. And right, he just right. he he's like, I got a joke for you. I wrote this joke for you, Eddie. And then you give it to him and he goes, I love it. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll buy that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So So Gascon. Yeah. Do I have to ask again? Overall I mean, great. Just give overall. this dude. I feel like I'm I feel like I'm under the gun here. I, I give <laughs> I give Rob Parker a a solid B. Eighty four percent. I love it. All Thank right. you, so everybody. You got three Bs and an A, Rob. Well, my, my grade wasn't suede because I'm wearing new shoes right now, but it's okay. No, not those Jordans, right? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Everybody's right. wearing Jordans courtesy of Rob right They're now. They're so he, dope. He sent them out this morning. We got them this morning. <laughs> He's out. a smart man. I can't no, wait for the you. actual stand-up, Rob, because it's going to be more raunchy than what you hear on this radio right. show. 
but I hope that it's less than like when we're just in the studio together. No, 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 no. No, but and you know Rob, why? Would, Rob would say we're in a soundproof jokes, studio. Soundproof. Rob will say something. And I'll look behind me like, oh, I hope no one heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, no, no, but you know okay. why I can't be that raunchy? Because everybody has cameras and stuff and cell phones. So you know what I mean? If I do something crazy, it could be on. You know, oh, I'll like, put it on my Instagram know. for sure. I'd be like, I am offended. Yeah. No, Get Rob.com. Rob. <laughs> right. Nah, right. Chris, I ain't going right. that route again. When I do <laughs> again. The, when I'm not I, doing when, that again. For I'm not doing that again. And when, <laughs> I'm going to record we, it and send it to Scott show, so I can take your when spot. When we get right. ready for that. Dick, Don, and Scott will sign off on all jokes. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I hear you. On I a public you. stage. Yep, yep, I'm too yep. old to get fired. I can't do that. <laughs> okay. That's a good joke. Your turn to weigh in on Rob's comedy special. What did you think? All right. Let's uh, kick it off with Leo in New York City. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. Hey, guys. How you guys doing tonight? Good, How man. Are How are you? Yeah, good, good. Merry Christmas to start off. And I, I got to say this. This was better than the first one because I guess I, because I'm too young or maybe because I wasn't born and raised in the state. I didn't really get the whole lot of the jokes from the first one. Maybe some got lost in translation. But this one was great. This one was actually good. Thank and you. I'm, actually, I'm actually looking forward to see you at the at Christmas art spot in Brooklyn. Hey, Chris. When are you yeah. opening this spot? You said fall. Yeah, you know how things go. It probably end up being All the spring, right. but it's it's opening. Hey, Two seventy five so Park in Brooklyn. We we'll, we will so definitely Chris, yeah. have Rob. I'll come to Brooklyn and do no it. doubt. Yeah, no doubt. Leo, definitely. I, Leo, we appreciate that. Merry Christmas to you and your family, my man. No problem. Oh, last 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 thing for me, real quick. Yeah, I got a joke for you, Rob. Okay. It actually happened two weeks ago. Real story. I'm I'm heading out with your homies, and my girl's like, "Yo, are you going to you know the strip joint?" And I'm like, "No, but if I were, I'm copying Rob Parker." And Chris is a Chris is her favorite, so she's like, "Oh, why can't you be more like Chris?" And I'm <laughs> like, "Well, technically, I am married." And she turned around and gave me the death stare, and she was <laughs> like, "You know what? On your way back home, pick up some baby oil." Oh! And I was like, whoa. <laughs> I need to stop listening to the show you on her. Now, that's funny. That is that's good. funny. Tell hey. her to call in sometime. Yeah, that's we'd right. love to hear from her. That's funny, Leo. Uh, all right, we got some tweets, too. Rob G has uh, of people, 877-99 on Fox, if you still want to call in. But we got some tweets, Rob G. Yeah, we, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the Twitter sphere because that's where most of the, the content driving is nowadays. So. Yes. I got a few of my favorites. This is from Ben Hensley. It says, it's been really awesome, all caps, hearing Rob Parker on the radio the past years. Do you run the comedy routine past the producers first? <laughs> 10 out of 10, but the network might end up giving Alex a censor button. That's so, true. That, that you is do true. know that. Yep. We had yep. These, the Central Valley King say, hey, Rob, you should tweet out your comedy. That's a good suggestion. Okay. Um, think about that. Got this one uh, uh, from Mallory Beck. Great comedy show this evening. Funny content, all caps, exclamation point. This is one that's going to, I think, drive a little conversation here. Hamza on Twitter, he tweets a lot. Yes. Rob Parker, that was very funny. All the emojis. We should get five minutes every Thursday. No, I can't do that. Uh, thank you. That would be. That's a lot. You know how hard yeah, it is? That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. It's hard to be funny. Like, like five minutes is a lot. Of time, I appreciate that. Just even saying it, but I already know I couldn't do that. That's thing. why he's divorced. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Five minutes is a lot every night. 